Poems of Power by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Queen's Last Ride. The Queen is taking a drive today. They have hung with purple the carriage way. They have dressed with purple the royal track, where the Queen goes forth and never comes back. Let no man labour as she goes by on her last appearance to mortal eye. With hats uncovered, let all men wait for the Queen to pass in her regal state. Army and navy shall lead the way for that wonderful coach of the Queen's today. Kings and princes and lords of the land shall ride behind her, her humble band. And over the city and over the world shall the flags of all nations be half-mast furled. For the silent lady of royal birth, who is riding away from the courts of earth, riding away from the world's unrest, to a mystical goal on a secret quest. Though in royal splendour she drives through town, her robes are simple, she wears no crown. And yet she wears one, for, widowed no more, she is crowned with the love that has gone before, and crowned with the love she has left behind in the hidden depths of each mourner's mind. Bow low your heads, lift your hearts on high, the queen in silence is striving by. End of poem. Recording by Jule Niedermeyer. The Meeting of the Centuries by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. Read for LibriVox.org by Ken Masters, Carolyn, and Christine G. A curious vision on mine eyes unfurled in the deep night. I saw, or seemed to see, two centuries meet and sit down vis a vis across the great round table of the world. One with suggested sorrows in his mien and on his brow the furrowed lines of thought, and one whose glad expectant presence brought a glow and radiance from the realms unseen. Hand clasped with hand, in silence for a space, the centuries sat. The sad old eyes of one, as grave paternal eyes regard a son, gazing upon that other eager face. And then a voice as cadenceless and grey as the sea's monody in winter time, mingled with tones melodious as the chime of bird choirs singing in the dawns of May. The Old Century Speaks By you hope stands, with me experience walks, like a fair jewel in a faded box in my tear rusted heart sweet pity lies for all the dreams that look forth from your eyes and those bright hued ambitions which i know must fall like leaves and perish in time's snow even as my soul's garden stands bereft I give you pity, tis the one gift left. The New Century Nay, nay, good friend, not pity, but God speed. Here in the morning of my life I need counsel and not condolence, smiles, not tears, to guide me through the channels of the years. Oh, I am blinded by the blaze of light that shines upon me from the infinite blurred in my vision by the close approach to unseen shores whereon the times encroach the old century illusion all illusion list and hear the godless cannons booming far and near flaunting the flag of unbelief with greed 
for pilot lo the pirate age in speed bears on to ruin wars the most hideous crimes besmirch the record of these modern times degenerate is the world i leave to you my happiest speech to earth will be adieu the new century you speak as one too weary to be just i hear the guns i see the greed and lust the death throes of a giant evil fill the air with riot and confusion ill of times makes follow ground for good and wrong builds right foundation when it grows too strong pregnant with surprise is the hour and grand the trust you leave in my all-willing hand the old century as one who throws a flickering taper's ray to light departing feet my shadow to weigh you brighten with your faith faith makes the man alas that my poor foolish age outran its early trust in god the death of art and progress follows when the world's heart hard casts out religion tis the human brain men worship now and heaven to them means gain the new century faith is not dead though priest and creed may pass for thought has leaved the whole unthinking mass and man looks now to find the god within we shall talk more of love and less of sin in this new era we are drawing near on atlas boundaries of larger sphere with awe i wait till science leads us on into the full effulgence of its dawn end of poem this recording is in the public domain death has crowned him a martyr by ella wheeler wilcox read for LibriVox.org by wakeman dk in spotsylvania virginia written on the day of president mckinley's death in the midst of sunny waters lo the mighty ship of state staggers bruised and torn and wounded by a derelict of fate one that drifted from its moorings in the anchorage of hate on the dock our noble pilot in the glory of his prime lies in woe impelling silence dead before his hour or time victim of a mind self-centered and a godless fool of crime one of earth's dissentient breeders one of hate's unreasoning tools in the annals of the ages when the world's hot anger cools he who sought for crime's distinction shall be known as chief of fools in the annals of the ages he who had no thought of fame keeping on the path of duty caring not for praise or blame close beside the deathless lincoln writ in light will shine his name youth proclaimed him as a hero time a statesman love a man death has crowned him as a martyr so from goal to goal he ran knowing all the sum of glory that a human life may span he was chosen by the people not an accident of birth made him ruler of a nation but his own intrinsic worth fools may govern over kingdoms not republics of the earth he has raised the lover's standard by his loyalty and faith he has shown how virile manhood may keep free from scandal's breath he has gazed with trust unshaken in the awful eyes of death in the mighty march of progress he has sought to do his best let his enemies be silent as we lay him down to rest and may god assuage the anguish of one suffering woman's breast end of poem this recording is in the public domain grief by ella wheeler wilcox read for librivox.org by wakeman tk in spotsylvania virginia as the funeral train with its honored dead on its mournful way went sweeping while a sorrowful nation bowed its head and the whole world joined in weeping i thought 
as I looked on the solemn sight of the one fond heart despairing, and I said to myself, as in truth I might, how sad must be this sharing. To share the living with even fame for a heart that is only human is hard when glory asserts her claim like a bold, insistent woman. Yet a great, grand passion can put aside or stay each selfish emotion and watch with a pleasure that springs from pride its rival, the world's devotion. But death should render to love its own, and my heart bowed down and sorrowed, for the stricken woman who wept alone, while even her dead was borrowed, borrowed from her, the bride, the wife, for the world's last martial honor, as she sat in the gloom of her darkened life, with her widow's grief fresh upon her. He had shed the glory of love and fame in a golden halo about her, she had shared his triumphs and worn his name, but alas, he had died without her. He had wandered in many a distant realm and never had left her behind him, but now, with a spectral shape at the helm, he had sailed where she could not find him. It was only a thought that came that day in the midst of the muffled drumming and funeral music and sad display that I knew was right and becoming, only a thought, as the morning train moved column after column, bearing the dead to the burial plain with a reverence grand as solemn. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Illusion by Ella Wheeler Wilcox, read for LibriVox.org by Ken Masters. God and I in space alone, and nobody else in view. And where are the people, O Lord, I said, the earth below and the sky o'erhead, and the dead whom once I knew? That was a dream, God smiled and said, a dream that seemed to be true. There were no people, living or dead, there was no earth and no sky o'erhead, there was only myself in you. Why do I feel no fear, I asked, meeting you here this way? For I have sinned, I know full well. And is there heaven, and is there hell, and is this the judgment day? Say, those were but dreams, the great God said, dreams that have ceased to be. There are no such things as fear or sin, there is no you, you never have been. There is nothing at all but me. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Assertion by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Ken Masters I am serenity, though passions beat like mighty billows on my helpless heart. I know beyond them lies the perfect sweet serenity which patience can impart. And when wild tempests in my bosom rage, peace, peace, I cry, it is my heritage. I am good health. Though fevers rack my brain and rude disorders mutilate my strength, a perfect restoration after pain I know shall be my recompense at length. And so through grievous day and sleepless night, Health, health, I cry, it is my own by right. I am success. Though hungry, cold, ill-clad, I wander for a while, I smile and say, It is but for a time, I shall be glad tomorrow, For good fortune comes my way. 
God is my Father, He has wealth untold, His wealth is mine, health, happiness, and gold. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. I Am by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Jule Niedermeyer I know not whence I came, I know not whither I go, But the fact stands clear that I am here, In this world of pleasure and woe, And out of the mist and murk another truth shines plain, It is my power each day and hour to add to its joy or its pain. I know that the earth exists, it is none of my business why, I cannot find out what it's all about, I would but waste time to try. My life is a brief, brief thing, I am here for a little space, and while I stay I would like, if I may, to brighten and better the place. The trouble, I think, with us all, is the lack of a high conceit. If each man thought he was sent to this spot to make it a bit more sweet, how soon we could gladden the world, how easily right or wrong, if nobody shirked and each one worked to help his fellows along. Cease wondering why you came, stop looking for faults and flaws, rise up today in your pride and say, I am part of the first great cause. However full the world, there is room for an earnest man. It had need of me, or I would not be. I am here to strengthen the plan. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Wishing by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Julia Niedermeyer do you wish the world were better? Let me tell you what to do. Set a watch upon your actions, keep them always straight and true. Rid your mind of selfish motives, let your thoughts be clean and high. You can make a little Eden of the sphere you occupy. Do you wish the world were wiser? Well, suppose you make a start by accumulating wisdom in the scrapbook of your heart. Do not waste one page on folly. Live to learn and learn to live. If you want to give men knowledge, you must get it ere you give. Do you wish the world were happy? Then remember day by day just to scatter seeds of kindness as you pass along the way. For the pleasures of the many may be oft times traced to one, as the hand that plants an acorn shelters armies from the sun end of poem this recording is in the public domain we too by ella wheeler wilcox read for librivox dot org by ken masters we too make home of any place we go we too find joy in any kind of weather. Or if the earth is clothed in bloom or snow, If summer days invite or bleak winds blow, What matters it if we two are together? We too, we too, we make our world our weather. We too make banquets of the plainest fare, in every cup we find the thrill of pleasure. We hide with wreaths the furrowed brow of care, And win to smiles the set lips of despair. For us life always moves with lilting measure. We too, we too, we make our world our pleasure. We too find youth renewed with every dawn. Each day holds something of an unknown glory. 
We waste no thought on grief or pleasure gone, Tricked out like hope, time leads us on and on, And thrums upon his harp new song or story. We too, we too, we find the paths of glory. We too make heaven here on this little earth. We do not need to wait for realms eternal. We know the use of tears, no sorrow's worth, And pain for us is always love's rebirth. Our paths lead closely by the path supernal. We too, we too, we live in love eternal. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Poet's Theme by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Ken Masters What is the explanation of the strange silence of American poets concerning American triumphs on sea and land? Literary Digest Why should the poet of these pregnant times be asked to sing of war's unholy crimes? To laud and eulogize the trade which thrives on horrid hollow casts of human lives? Man was a fighting beast when earth was young, and war the only theme when Homer sung. Twixt might and might the equal contest lay, not so the battles of our modern day. Too often now the conquering hero struts a gulliver among the lilliputs. Success no longer rests on skill or fate, but on the movements of a syndicate. Of old men fought and deemed it right and just. Today the warrior fights because he must, and in his secret soul feels shame because he desecrates the higher manhood's laws. Oh, there are worthier themes for poet's pen in this great hour than bloody deeds of men, or triumphs of one hero, though he be deserving song for his humility. The rights of many, not the worth of one. The coming issues, not the battle done. The awful opulence and awful need. The rise of brotherhood, the fall of greed. The soul of man replete with God's own force. The call to heights and not the cry to horse. Are there not better themes in this great age for pen of poet or for voice of sage than those old tales of killing? Song is dumb, only that greater song in time may come. When comes the bard, he whom the world waits for, he will not sing of war. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Song of the Spirit by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Ken Masters All the aim of life is just getting back to God. Spirit casting off its dust, getting back to God. Every grief we have to bear, disappointment, cross, despair, each is but another stair, climbing back to God. Step by step and mile by mile, getting back to God. Nothing else is worth the while, getting back to God. Light and shadow fill each day, joys and sorrows pass away, smile at all, and smiling say, getting back to God. 
Do not wear a mournful face, Getting back to God. Scatter sunshine on the place, Going back to God. Take what pleasure you can find, But where'er your paths may wind, Keep the purpose well in mind, Getting back to God. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Womanhood by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Shakira Searle She must be honest, both in thought and deed, Of generous impulse, and above all greed, not seeking praise or place or power or pelf, but life's best blessings for her higher self, which means the best for all. She must have faith to make good friends of trouble, pain and death, and understand their message. She should be as redolent with tender sympathy as is a rose with fragrance. Cheerfulness should be her mantle, even though her dress may be of sorrow's weaving. On her face a loyal nature leaves its seal of grace, and chastity is in her atmosphere. Not that chill chastity which seems austere, like untrod snow peaks, Lovely to behold till once attained, Then barren, loveless, cold. But the white flame that feeds upon the soul And lights the pathway to a peaceful goal, A sense of humour and a touch of mirth To brighten up the shadowy spots of earth, And pride that passes evil, choosing good, all these unite in perfect womanhood. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Morning Prayer by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Ken Masters let me today do something that shall take a little sadness from the world's vast store, and may I be so favoured as to make of joy's too scanty sum a little more. Let me not hurt by any selfish deed or thoughtless word the heart of foe or friend nor would i pass unseeing worthy need or sin by silence when i should defend however meagre be my worldly wealth let me give something that shall aid my kind a word of courage or a thought of health dropped as i pass for troubled hearts to find let me to-night look back across the span twixt dawn and dark and to my conscience say because of some good act to beast or man the world is better that i lived to-day end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Voices of the People by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Bean420 Oh, I hear the people calling through the daytime and the nighttime. They are calling, they are crying for the coming of the right time. It behooves you, men and women, it behooves you to be heeding, for there lurks a note of menace underneath their plaintive pleading. Let the land usurpers listen, let the greedy-hearted ponder on the meaning of the murmur rising here and swelling yonder, swelling louder, waxing stronger, like a storm-fed stream that courses through the valleys, down abysses, growing, gaining with new forces. Day by day the river widens, 
that great river of opinion, and its torrent beats and plunges at the base of greed's dominion. Though you damn it by oppression and fling golden bridges o'er it, yet the day and hour advances when in fright you'll flee before it. Yes, I hear the people calling through the night time and the daytime, wretched toilers in life's autumn, weary young ones in life's maytime. They are crying, they are calling for their share of work and pleasure. You are heaping high your coffers while you give them scanty measure. You have stolen God's wide acres just to clutch your swollen purses. Oh, restore them to his children ere their pleading turns to curses. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The World Grows Better by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Bean420 Oh, the earth is full of sinning, and of trouble, and of woe. But the devil makes an inning every time we say it so. And the way to set him scowling, and to put him back apace, is to stop the stupid growling, and to look things in the face. If you glance at history's pages, and all lands and eras known, you will find the buried ages far more wicked than our own. As you scan each word and letter, you will realize it more, that the world today is better than it ever was before. There is much that needs amending, in the present time, no doubt. There is right that needs amending, and there is wrong needs crushing out. And we hear the groans and curses of the poor who starve and die, while the men with swollen purses in the place of hearts go by. But in spite of all the trouble that obscures the sun today, just remember it was double in the ages passed away. And those wrongs shall all be righted, good shall dominate the land, for the darkness now is lighted by the torch in science's hand. Forth from little moats and chaos we have come to what we are, and no evil force can stay us. We shall mount from star to star, we shall break each bond and fetter that has bound us heretofore, and the earth is surely better than it ever was before. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Man's Ideal by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Bean420 A lovely little keeper of the home Absorbed in menu books, yet erudite when I need counsel, quick at repartee and slow to anger, modest as a flower, yet scintillant and radiant as a star, unmercenary in her mold of mind, while opulent and dainty in her taste, a nature generous and free, albeit the incarnation of economy. She must be chaste as proud Diana was, yet warm as Venus." To all others cold as some white glacier glittering in the sun, To me as ardent as the sensuous rose That yields its sweetness to the burrowing bee, All ignorant of evil in the world, And innocent as any cloister nun, Yet wise as Phryne in the arts of love When I come thirsting to her nectar lips, Good as the best and tempting as the worst, A saint, a siren, and a paradox. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Fire Brigade by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Richard Carter in Murray, Utah Hark! High are the rattle and clamor and clatter of traffic-filled streets. Do you hear that loud noise? And the pushing and rushing to see what's the matter, like herds of wild cattle go pell-mell the boys. There's a fire in the city! The engines are coming, the bold bells are clanging. Make way in the streets. The wheels of the horse carts are spinning and humming in the time of the music of galloping feet. Make way there, make way there. The horses are flying. The sparks from their swift hooves shoot higher and higher. The crowds are increasing, the gamins are crying. Hooray, boys, hooray, boys, come on to the fire. With clanging and banging and clatter and rattle, the long ladders follow the engine and hose. The men are all ready to dash into battle, but will they come out again? God only knows. At windows and doorways, 
crowd questioning faces. There's something about it that quickens one's breath. How proudly the brave fellows sit in their places and speed to the conflict that may be their death. Still faster and faster and faster, the grand horses thunder and leap on their way. The red foe is yonder and may prove the master. Turn out there, bold traffic, turn out there, I say. For once the loud truckman knows oath will not matter and reins in his horses and yields to his fate. The engines are coming. Let pleasure crowds scatter. Let street cards and truckmen and mail wagon wait. They speed like a comet. They pass in a minute. The boys follow on like a tail to a kite. The commonplace street has but traffic now in it. The great fire engines have swept out of sight. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Tides by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Joseph Tabler The Tides Be careful what rubbish you toss in the tide. On outgoing billows it drifts from your sight, but back on the incoming waves it may ride, and land at your threshold again before night. Be careful what rubbish you toss in the tide. Be careful what follies you toss in life's sea. On bright dancing billows they drift far away. But back on the nemesis tides they may be thrown down at your threshold an unwelcome day. Be careful what follies you toss in youth's sea. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. When the Regiment Came Back by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Julia Niedermeyer All the uniforms were blue, All the swords were bright and new, When the regiment went marching down the street. All the men were hale and strong, As they proudly moved along, Through the cheers that drowned the music of their feet. Oh, the music of the feet, keeping time to drums that beat. Oh, the splendor and the glitter of the sight. As with swords and rifles new, and in uniforms of blue, the regiment went marching to the fight. When the regiment came back, all the guns and swords were black, and the uniforms had faded out to gray. And the faces of the men who marched through that street again seemed like faces of the dead who lose their way. For the dead who lose their way cannot look more wan and grey. Oh, the sorrow and the pity of the sight. Oh, the weary lagging feet out of step with drums that beat as the regiment comes marching from the fight. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Woman to Man by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Anna Marie Tokus You do but jest, sir, and you jest not well. How could the hand be enemy of the arm? Or seed and sod be rivals? How could light feel jealousy of heat, plant of the leaf, or competition dwell twixt lip and smile? Are we not part and parcel of yourselves? Like strands in one great braid we intertwine and make the perfect whole. You could not be unless we gave you birth. We are the soil from which you sprang, yet sterile were that soil save as you planted. Though in the book we read one woman bore a child with no man's aid, we find no record of a man-child born without the aid of woman. Fatherhood is but a small achievement at the best, while motherhood comprises heaven and hell. This ever-growing argument of sex is most unseemly and devoid of sense. 
Why waste more time in controversy when there is not enough time for all of love, our rightful occupation in this life? Why prate of our defects, of where we fail, when just the story of our worth would need eternity for telling, and our best development comes ever through your praise, as through our praise you reach your highest self? Oh, had you not been miser of your praise, and let our virtues be their own reward, the old established order of the world would never have been changed. Small blame is ours for this unsexing of ourselves, and worse, if feminizing of the male. We were content, sir, till you starved us, heart and brain. All we have done, or wise, or otherwise, traced to the root, was done for love of you. Let us taboo all vain comparisons, and go forth as God meant us, hand in hand, companions, mates, and comrades evermore, two parts of one divinely ordained whole. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Traveler by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org By Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida The Traveler Reply to Rudyard Kipling's He travels the fastest Who travels alone Who travels alone With his eyes on the heights Though he laughs in the daytime Oft weeps in the nights for courage goes down at the set of the sun, When the toil of the journey is all borne by one. He speeds but to grief, though full gaily he ride, Who travels alone without love at his side. Who travels alone without lover or friend, But hurries from nothing to naught at the end. Though great be his winnings, and high be his goal, He is bankrupt in wisdom, and beggared in soul. Life's one gift of value to him is denied, Who travels alone without love at his side. It is easy enough in this world to make haste, If one live for that purpose, but think of the waste. For life is a poem, to leisurely read, and the joy of the journey lies not in its speed. Oh, vain his achievement and petty his pride, who travels alone without love at his side. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. THE EARTH by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida THE EARTH The earth is yours and mine, our God's bequest, That testament divine, who dare contest? Usurpers of the earth, we claim our share, we are of royal birth. Beware, beware. Unloose the hand of greed from God's fair land. We claim but what we need. That we demand. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Now by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org By Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida Now I leave with God tomorrow's where and how And do concern myself but with the now That little word, though half the future's length Well used, holds twice its meaning and its strength 
like one blindfolded groping out his way i will not try to touch beyond to-day since all the future is concealed from sight i need but strive to make the next step right that done the next and so on till i find perchance some day i am no longer blind and looking up behold a radiant friend who says rest now for you have reached the end end of poem this recording is in the public domain you and today by ella wheeler wilcox read for LibriVox.org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida you and today with every rising of the sun think of your life as just begun the past has shrived and buried deep all yesterdays there let them sleep nor seek to summon back one ghost of that innumerable host concern yourself with but to-day woo it and teach it to obey your wish and will since time began to-day has been the friend of man but in his blindness and his sorrow he looks to yesterday and to-morrow you and to-day a soul sublime in the great pregnant hour of time with god between to bind the train go forth i say attain attain end of poem this recording is in the public domain the reason by ella wheeler wilcox read for LibriVox.org by christine g do you know what moves the tides as they swing from low to high tis the love 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 of the moon within the sky oh they follow where she guides to the faithful hearted tides do you know what moves the earth out of winter into spring tis the love 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 of the sun the mighty king oh the rapture that finds birth in the kiss of sun and earth do you know what makes sweet songs ring for me above earth strife tis the love 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 that you bring into my life o oh, the glory of the songs in the heart where love belongs end of poem this recording is in the public domain mission by ella wheeler wilcox read for LibriVox.org by christine g if you are sighing for a lofty work if great ambitions dominate your mind just watch yourself and see you do not shirk the common little ways of being kind if you are dreaming of a future goal when crowded with glory men shall own your power be careful that you let no struggling soul go by unaided in the present hour if you are moved to pity for the earth and long to aid it do not look so high you pass some poor dumb creature faint with thirst all life is equal in the eternal eye if you would help to make the wrong things right begin at home there lies a lifetime's toil with your own garden fair for all men's sight before you plan to till another soil god chooses his own leaders in the world and from the rest he asks but willing hands as mighty mountains into place are hurled while patient tides may only shape the sands end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Repetition by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org By Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida Over and over and over These truths I will weave in song that god's great plan needs you and me that will is greater than destiny and that love moves the world along however mankind may doubt it it shall listen and hear my creed that god may ever be found within that the worship of self is the only sin 
and the only devil is greed over and over and over these truths i will say and sing that love is mightier far than hate that a man's own thought is a man's own fate and that life is a goodly thing end of poem this recording is in the public domain Begin the Day by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida Begin the Day Begin each morning with a talk to God And ask for your divine inheritance Of usefulness, contentment, and success Resign all fear, all doubt and all despair the stars doubt not and they are undismayed the world through space for countless centuries and told not why or wherefore and the sea with everlasting ebb and flow obeys and leaves the purpose with the unseen cause the star sheds radiance on a million worlds the sea is prodigal with waves and yet no lustre from the star is lost and not one drop is missing from the ocean tides oh brother to the star and sea know all god's opulence is held in trust for those who wait serenely and who work in faith end of poem this recording is in the public domain words by ella wheeler wilcox read for LibriVox.org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida words words are great forces in the realm of life be careful of their use who talks of hate of poverty of sickness but sets rife these very elements to mar his fate when love health happiness and plenty here their names repeated over day by day they wing their way like answering fairies near then nestle down within our homes to stay who talks of evil conjures into shape the formless thing and gives it life and scope this is the law then let no word escape that does not breathe of everlasting hope End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Fate and I by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. Read for LibriVox.org by Ronnie K. Wise men tell me thou, O fate, art invincible and great. Well, I own thy prowess, still dare I flout thee with my will. Thou canst shatter in a span All the earthly pride of man. Outward things thou canst control, But stand back, I rule my soul. Death, tis such a little thing, Scarcely worth the mentioning. What has death to do with me, Save to set my spirit free? Something in me dwells, O fate, That can rise and dominate Loss and sorrow and disaster. How then, fate, art thou my master? In the great primeval morn, my immortal will was born, part of that stupendous cause which conceived the solar laws, lit the suns and filled the seas, royalest of pedigrees. That great cause was love the source, who most loves has most of force. He who harbors hate one hour saps the soul of peace and power. He who will not hate his foe Need not dread life's hardest blow. In the realm of brotherhood, Wishing no man aught but good, Naught but good can come to me. This is love's supreme decree. Since I bar my door to hate, What have I to fear, O fate? Since I fear not, fate, I vow, 
I the ruler am, not thou. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Attainment by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King. Use all your hidden forces. Do not miss the purpose of this life. And do not wait for circumstance to mould or change your fate. In your own self lies destiny. Let this vast truth cast out all fear, all prejudice, all hesitation. Know that you are great, great with divinity, so dominate environment and enter into bliss. Love largely and hate nothing. Hold no aim that does not chord with universal good. Hear what the voices of the silence say. All joys are yours if you put forth your claim. Once let the spiritual laws be understood. Material things must answer and obey. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Plea to Peace by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Anna Marie Tokus When mighty issues loom before us, all the petty great men of the day seem small, like pygmies standing in a blaze of light before some grim, majestic mountain height. War, with its bloody and impartial hand, reveals the hidden weakness of a land, uncrowns the heroes trusting peace has made of men whose honor is a thing of trade, and turns the searchlight full on many a place where proud conventions long have masked disgrace. O oh, lovely peace, as thou art fair, be wise. Demand great men, and great men shall arise to do thy bidding. Even as warriors come, swift at the call of bugle and of drum, so at the voice of peace, imperative as bugles call, shall heroes spring to live for country and for thee. In every land, in every age, men are what times demand. Demand the best, O peace, and teach thy sons they need not rush in front of death-charged guns with murder in their hearts to prove their worth. The grandest heroes who have graced the earth were love-filled souls who did not seek the fray, but chose the safe, hard, high, and lonely way of selfless labor for a suffering world. Beneath our glorious flag again unfurled in victory, such heroes wait to be called into bloodless action. Peace by thee. Be thou insistent in thy stern demand, and wise, great men shall rise up in the land. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Presumption by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Rosalind Carlyle Whenever I am prone to doubt or wonder, I check myself and say, That mighty one who made the solar system cannot blunder, And for the best all things are being done, Who set the stars on their eternal courses, Has fashioned this strange earth by some sure plan, Bow low, bow low to those majestic forces, nor dare to doubt their wisdom, puny man. You cannot put one little star in motion, you cannot shape one single forest leaf, nor fling a mountain up, nor sink an ocean, presumptuous pygmy large with unbelief. You cannot bring one dawn of regal splendour, nor bid the day to shadowy twilight fall nor send the pale moon forth with radiance tender. And dare you doubt the one who has done all? So much is wrong, there is such pain, such sinning. Yet look again, behold how much is right, 
and he who formed the world from its beginning knows how to guide it upward to the light your task o oh man is not to carp and cavil at god's achievements but with purpose strong to cling to good and turn away from evil that is the way to help the world along end of poem this recording is in the public domain High Noon by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Freya Hansen Time's finger on the dial of my life points to high noon, and yet the half-spent day leaves less than half remaining, for the dark bleak shadows of the grave engulf the end. To those who burn the candle to the stick, the sputtering socket yields but little light. Long life is sadder than an early death. We cannot count on raveled threads of age whereof to weave a fabric. We must use the warp and woof the ready present yields, and toil while daylight lasts. When I bethink how brief the past, the future, still more brief, calls on to action. Action. Not for me. It's time for retrospection, or for dreams. Not time for self-laudation or remorse. Have I done nobly? then I must not let dead yesterday unborn tomorrow shame. Have I done wrong? Well, let the bitter taste of fruit that turned to ashes on my lip be the reminder in temptation's hour, and keep me silent when I would condemn. Sometimes it takes the acid of a sin to cleanse the clouded windows of our souls, so pity may shine through them. Looking back, my faults and errors seem like stepping stones that led the way to knowledge of the truth and made me value virtue. Sorrows shine in rainbow colours o'er the gulf of years where lie forgotten pleasures. Looking forth, out to the western sky still bright with noon, I feel well spurred and booted for the strife that ends not till nirvana is attained. Battling with fate, with men, and with myself, up to the steep summit of my life's forenoon, three things I learned, three things of precious worth, to guide and help me down the western slope. I have learned how to pray, and toil, and save, to pray for courage to receive what comes, knowing what comes to be divinely sent, to toil for universal good, since thus, and only thus, can good come unto me to save, by giving whatsoever I have to those who have not. This, alone, is gain. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Thought Magnets by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Carol Box With each strong thought with every earnest longing for aught thou deemest needful to thy soul, invisible vast forces are set thronging between thee and that goal. Tis only when some hidden weakness alters and changes thy desire, or makes it less, that this mysterious army ever falters, or stops short of success. Thought is a magnet, and the longed-for pleasure or boon, or aim, or object is the steel, and its attainment hangs but on the measure of what thy soul can feel. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Smiles by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Carol Box Smile a little, smile a little, as you go along, not alone when life is pleasant, but when things go wrong. Care delights to see you frowning, loves to hear you sigh, turn a smiling face upon her, quick the dame will fly. Smile a little, smile a little, all along the road, every life must have its burden, every heart its load. Why sit down in gloom and darkness with your grief to sup? 
as you drink fate's bitter tonic, smile across the cup. Smile upon the troubled pilgrims whom you pass and meet, frowns are thorns, and smiles are blossoms oft for weary feet. Do not make the way seem harder by a sullen face. Smile a little, smile a little, brighten up the place. Smile upon your undone labour, not for one who grieves o'er his task waits wealth or glory. He who smiles achieves. Though you meet with loss and sorrow in the passing years, smile a little, smile a little, even through your tears. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Undiscovered Country by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King Man has explored all countries and all lands And made his own the secrets of each clime Now ere the world has fully reached its prime The oval earth lies compassed with steel bands The seas are slaves to ships that touch all strands And even the haughty elements sublime and bold yield him their secrets for all time and speed like lackeys forth at his commands still though he search from shore to distant shore and no strange realms no unlocated plains are left for his attainment and control yet is there one more kingdom to explore go know thyself o man there yet remains the undiscovered country of thy soul. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Universal Route by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. Read for LibriVox.org by Roslyn Carlyle. As we journey along with a laugh and a song, we see on youth's flower decked slope. Like a beacon of light, shining fair on the sight, The beautiful station of hope. But the wheels of old time roll along as we climb, And our youth speeds away on the years, And with hearts that are numb with life's sorrows we come To the mist-covered station of tears. Still onward we pass, where the milestones, alas, Are the tombs of our dead to the west. Where glitters and gleams in the dying sunbeams The sweet silent station of rest. All rest is but change, and no grave can estrange The soul from its parent above. And, scorning the rod, it soars back to its god, To the limitless city of love. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Unanswered Prayers by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Christine G. Like some schoolmaster, kind in being stern, Who bears to children crying over their slates, And calling, Help me, master, yet helps not, Since in his silence and refusal lies, Their self-development so God abides, Unheeding many prayers, he is not deaf, To any cry sent up from earnest hearts, he hears and strengthens when he must deny. He sees us weeping over life's hard sums. But should he give the key and dry our tears, What would it profit us when school were done, And not one lesson mastered? What a world! Were this of all our prayers were answered, Not in famed Pandora's box, Where such vast ills as lie in human hearts, Should our desires, voiced one by one in prayer, ascend to God, and come back as events shaped to our wish, what chaos would result? In my fierce youth I sowed at breath enough to move a fleet, voicing wild prayers to heaven for fancied boons, which were denied, and that denial bends, my knee to prayer of gratitude each day, of my maturer years, yet from those prayers I rose alway regarded for the strife, and conscious of new strength, pray on sad heart, that which thou pleadest for may not be given, 
but in the lofty altitude where souls with supplicates god grace are lifted there thou shalt find help to bear thy daily lot which is not elsewhere found end of poem this recording is in the public domain thanksgiving by ella wheeler wilcox read for LibriVox.org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida thanksgiving we walk on starry fields of white and do not see the daisies for blessings common in our sight we rarely offer praises we sigh for some supreme delight to crown our lives with splendor and quite ignore our daily store of pleasures sweet and tender our cares are bold and push their way upon our thought and feeling they hang about us all the day our time from pleasure stealing so unobtrusive many a joy we pass by and forget it but worry strives to own our lives and conquers if we let it there's not a day in all the year but holds some hidden pleasure and looking back joys oft appear to brim the past's wide measure but blessings are like friends i hold who love and labor near us we ought to raise our notes of praise while living hearts can hear us full many a blessing wears the guise of worry or of trouble far-seeing is the soul and wise who knows the mask is double but he who has the faith and strength to thank his god for sorrow has found a joy without alloy to gladden every morrow we ought to make the moment's notes of happy glad thanksgiving the hours and days a silent phrase of music we are living and so the theme should swell and grow as weeks and months pass o'er us and rise sublime at this good time a grand thanksgiving chorus end of poem this recording is in the public domain contrasts by ella wheeler wilcox read for librivox dot org by anna marie tokus i see the tall church steeples they reach so far so far but the eyes of my heart see the world's great mart where the starving people are i hear the church bells ringing their chimes on the morning air but my soul's sad ear is hurt to hear the poor man's cry of despair thicker and thicker the churches nearer and nearer the sky but a lack for their creeds while the poor man's needs grow deeper as the years roll by end of poem this recording is in the public domain thy ship by ella wheeler wilcox read for LibriVox.org by ian king hadst thou a ship in whose vast hold lay stored the priceless riches of all climes and lands say wouldst thou let it float upon the seas unpiloted of fickle winds the sport and of wild waves and hidden rocks the prey thine is that ship and in its depths concealed lies all the wealth of this vast universe yea lies some part of god's omnipotence the legacy divine of every soul thy will o man thy will is that great ship and yet behold it drifting here and there 
one moment lying motionless in port, then on high seas by sudden impulse flung, then drying on the sands, and yet again sent forth on idle quests to no man's land, to carry nothing and to nothing bring, till, worn and fretted by the aimless strife, and buffeted by vacillating winds, it found as on a rock, or springs a leak, with all its unused treasures in the hold. Go save for thy ship, thou sluggard, take the wheel, and steer to knowledge, glory, and success. Great mariners have made the pathway plain for thee to follow. Hold thou to the course of concentration channel, and all things shall come in answer to thy swerveless wish, as comes the needle to the magnet's call, or sunlight to the prisoned blade of grass that yearns all winter for the kiss of spring. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Life by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Freya Hansen All in the dark we grope along, and if we go amiss, we learn at least which path is wrong, and there is gain in this. We do not always win the race by only running right. We have to tread the mountain's base before we reach its height. The Christs alone no errors made, so often had they trod. The paths that led through light and shade, they had become as God. As Krishna, Buddha, Christ again, they passed along the way, and left those mighty truths which men but dimly grasp today. But he who loves himself the last, and knows the use of pain, though strewn with errors all his past, he surely shall attain. Some souls there are that needs must taste of wrong in choosing right, we should not call those years a waste which led us to the light. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Marine Etching by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org By Rosalind Carlyle A yacht from its harbour ropes pulled free and leapt like a steed o'er the racetrack blue. Then up behind her the dust of the sea, a grey fog drifted and hid her from view. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love Thyself Last by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Anna Marie Tokus Love thyself last. Look near, behold thy duty to those who walk beside thee down life's road. Make glad their days by little acts of beauty, and help them bear the burden of earth's load. Love thyself last. Look far and find the stranger who staggers neath his sin and his despair. Go lend a hand and lead him out of danger to heights where he may see the world is fair. Love thyself last. The vastnesses above thee are filled with spirit forces, strong and pure, and fervently these faithful friends shall love thee. Keep thou thy watch o'er others, and endure. Love thyself last. And, oh, such joy shall thrill thee as never yet to selfish souls was given. What are thy lot? A perfect peace will fill thee, and earth shall seem the ante-room of heaven. Love thyself last, and thou shalt grow in spirit to see, to hear, to know, and understand. The message of the stars, lo, Thou shalt hear it, and all God's joy shall be at thy command. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Christmas Fancies by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida Christmas Fancies When Christmas bells are swinging above the fields of snow We hear sweet voices ringing from lands of long ago and etched on vacant places are half-forgotten faces of friends we used to cherish and loves we used to know when christmas bells are swinging above the fields of snow uprising from the ocean of the present surging near we see with strange emotion that is not free from fear that continent elysian long vanished from our vision youth's lovely lost atlantis so mourned for and so dear uprising from the ocean of the present surging near when gloomy gray decembers are roused to christmas mirth the dullest life remembers there once was joy on earth and draws from youth's recesses some memory it possesses and gazing through the lens of time exaggerates its worth when gloomy gray december is roused to christmas mirth when hanging up the holly or mistletoe i wis each heart recalls some folly that lit the world with bliss not all the seers and sages with wisdom of the ages can give the mind such pleasure as memories of that kiss when hanging up the holly or mistletoe i wis for life was made for loving and love alone repays as passing years are proving for all of time's sad ways there lies a sting in pleasure and fame gives shallow measure and wealth is but a phantom that mocks the restless days for life was made for loving and only loving pays when christmas bells are pelting the air with silver chimes and silences are melting to soft melodious rhymes let love the world's beginning and fear and hate and sinning let love the god eternal be worshipped in all climes when christmas bells are pelting the air with silver chimes end of poem this recording is in the public domain The River by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida The River I am a river flowing from God's sea. Through devious ways he mapped my course for me. I cannot change it, mine alone the toil, To keep the waters free from grime and soil. The winding river ends where it began, And when my life has compassed its brief span, I must return to that mysterious source, So let me gather daily on my course. The perfume from the blossoms as I pass, Balm from the pines, and healing from the grass, And carry down my current as I go, Not common stones, but precious gems to show, And tears, the holy water from sad eyes, Back to God's sea, from which all rivers rise. Let me convey, not blood from wounded hearts, Nor poison which the upas tree imparts, when over flowery vales I leap with joy, Let me not devastate them, nor destroy, But rather leave them fairer to the sight, Mine be the lot to comfort and delight. And if down awful chasms 
I needs must leap. Let me not murmur at my lot, but sweep on bravely to the end without one fear, knowing that he who planned my ways stands near. Love sent me forth, to love I go again, for love is all and over all. Amen. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sorry by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. Read for LibriVox.org by Julia Niedermeyer. There is much that makes me sorry as I journey down life's way, and I seem to see more pathos in poor human lives each day. I'm sorry for the strong, brave men who shield the weak from harm, but who, in their own troubled hours, find no protecting arm. I'm sorry for the victors who have reached success to stand as targets for the arrows shot by envious failure's hand. I'm sorry for the generous hearts who freely shared their wine, but drink alone the gall of tears in fortune's drear decline. I'm sorry for the souls who built their own fame's funeral pyre, derided by the scornful throng like eyes deriding fire i'm sorry for the conquering ones who know not sin's defeat but daily tread down fierce desire neath scorched and bleeding feet i'm sorry for the anguished hearts that break with passion's strain but i'm sorrier for the poor starved souls that never knew love's pain who hunger on through barren years not tasting joys they crave for sadder far is such a lot than weeping o'er grave i'm sorry for the souls that come unwelcomed into birth i'm sorry for the unloved old who cumber up the earth i'm sorry for the suffering poor in life's great maelstrom hurled in truth I'm sorry for them all who make this aching world. But underneath, whatever seems sad and is not understood, I know there lies hid from our sight a mighty germ of good. And this belief stands firm by me, my sermon motto text. The sorriest things in this life will seem grandest in the next. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Ambition's Trail by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org By Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida If all the end of this continuous striving Were simply to attain how poor would seem the planning and contriving the endless urging and the hurried driving of body heart and brain but ever in the wake of true achieving there shines this glowing trail some other soul will be spurred on conceiving new strength and hope in its own power believing because thou didst not fail not thine alone the glory nor the sorrow if thou dost miss the goal undreamed of lives in many a far to-morrow from thee their weakness or their force shall borrow on on ambitious soul end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Uncontrolled by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. Read for LibriVox.org by Roslyn Carlyle. The mighty forces of mysterious space are one by one subdued by lordly man. The awful lightning that for eons ran their devastating and untrammelled race 
now bear his messages from place to place like carrier doves the winds lead on his van the lawless elements no longer can resist his strength but yield with sullen grace his bold feet scaling heights before untrod light darkness air and water heat and cold he bids go forth and bring him power and pelf and yet though ruler king and demigod he walks with his fierce passions uncontrolled the conqueror of all things save himself end of poem this recording is in the public domain will by ella wheeler wilcox read for LibriVox.org by ian quinlan you will be what you will to be. Let failure find its false content in that poor word environment. But spirit scorns it, and is free. It masters time, it conquers space, it cows that boastful trickster chance, and bids the tyrant circumstance uncrown and fill a servant's place. The human will, that force unseen, the offspring of a deathless soul, can hew the way to any goal, though walls of granite intervene. Be not impatient in delay, but wait as one who understands. When spirit rises and commands, the gods are ready to obey. The river seeking for the sea confronts the dam and precipice, yet knows it cannot fail or miss. You will be what you will to be. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To an Astrologer by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Stephen Vine Nay, seer, I do not doubt thy mystic lore, Nor question that the tenor of my life, Past, present, and the future, Is revealed there in my horoscope. I do believe that yon dead moon Compels the haughty seas to ebb and flow, and that my natal star stands like a stern-browed sentinel in space, and challenges events, nor lets one grief or joy or failure or success pass on to mar or bless my earthly lot until it proves its karmic right to come to me. All this I grant, but more than this I know. Before the solar systems were conceived, when nothing was but the unnameable, my spirit lived an atom of the cause, through countless ages and in many forms it has existed, ere it entered in this human frame to serve its little day upon the earth, the deathless me of me. The spark from that great all-creative fire is part of that eternal source called God, and mightier than the universe. Why, he who knows and knowing never once forgets the pedigree divine of his own soul, can conquer, shape, and govern destiny, and use vast space as t'were a board for chess, with stars for pawns, can change his horoscope to suit his will, turn failure to success, and from preordained sorrows harvest joy. There is no puny planet, sun or moon, or zodiacal sign which can control the god in us. If we bring that to bear upon events, we mould them to our wish. Tis when the infinite neath the finite gropes that men are governed by their horoscopes. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Tendrils' Fate by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. Read for LibriVox.org by Rosalind Carlyle. Under the snow, in the dark and the cold, a pale little sprout was humming. Sweetly it sang neath the frozen mould of the beautiful days that were coming. How foolish your songs, said a lump of clay. What is there, I ask, to prove them? Just look at the walls between you and the day. Now, have you the strength to move them? But under the ice and under the snow, the pale little sprout kept singing. I cannot tell how, but I know, I know, I know what the days are bringing. Birds and blossoms and buzzing bees, 
blue, blue skies above me, bloom on the meadows and buds on the trees, and the great glad sun to love me. A pebble spoke next. You are quite absurd, it said, with your song's insistence, for I never saw a tree or a bird, so of course there are none in existence. But I know, I know, the tendril cried, in beautiful, sweet unreason, till, lo, from its prison glorified, it burst in the glad spring season. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Times by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Dom Bombadil The Times, son or degenerate, Man's faith mounts higher than of old. No crumbling creed can take from the immortal soul the need Of that supreme creator, God. The wraith of death beliefs we cherished in our youth, Fates but to let us welcome newborn truth. Man may not worship at the ancient shrine, prone on his face in self-accusing scorn. That night is past. He hails a fairer morn, and knows himself as something all divine, not humble worm whose heritage is sin, but, born of God, he feels the Christ with all. Not loud his prayers as in the olden time, but deep his reverence for that mighty force that occult working of the great all-source, which makes the present era so sublime. Religion now means something high and broad, and man stood never half so near to God. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Question by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King Beside us in our seeking after pleasures, Through all our restless striving after fame, Through all our search for worldly gains and treasures, There walketh one whom no man likes to name. Silent he follows, veiled of form and feature, Indifferent if we sorrow or rejoice. Yet that day comes when every living creature must look upon his face and hear his voice. When that day comes to you, and death, unmasking, shall by your path and say, Behold the end. What are the questions that he will be asking about your past? Have you considered, friend? I think he will not chide you for your sinning, nor for your creeds or dogmas will he care. He will but ask, from your life's first beginning, how many burdens have you helped to bear? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sorrow's Uses by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Jule Niedermeyer The uses of sorrow I comprehend better and better at each year's end deeper and deeper i seem to see why and wherefore it has to be only after the dark wet days do we fully rejoice in the sun's bright rays sweeter the crust tastes after the fast than the sated gourmand's finest repast the faintest cheer sounds never amiss to the actor who once has heard a hiss. To one who the sadness of freedom knows, Light seem the fetters love may impose. And he who has dwelled with his heart alone, Hears all the music in friendship's tone. So better and better I comprehend How sorrow ever would be our friend. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. If by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org By Ian King Twixt what thou art 
and what thou wouldst be, let no if arise on which to lay the blame. Man makes a mountain of that puny word, but like a blade of grass before the scythe, it falls and withers when a human will, stirred by creative force, sweeps towards its aim. Thou wilt be what thou couldst be. Circumstance is but the toy of genius. When a soul burns with a godlike purpose to achieve, all obstacles between it and its goal must vanish as the dew before the sun. If is the motto of the dilettante and idle dreamer, tis the poor excuse of mediocrity. The truly great know not the word, or know it but to scorn. Else had Joan of Arc a peasant died, uncrowned by glory, and by men unsung. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Which Are You? by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. Read for LibriVox.org by Julia Niedermeyer. There are two kinds of people on earth today, Just two kinds of people, no more, I say. Not the sinner and saint, for it's well understood, The good are half bad and the bad are half good. Not the rich and the poor, for to rate a man's wealth, You must first know the state of his conscience and health. Not the humble and proud, for in life's little span, Who puts on vain airs is not counted a man. Not the happy and sad, for the swift flying years, Bring each man his laughter, and each man his tears. No, the two kinds of people on earth I mean, Are the people who lift, and the people who lean. Wherever you go, you will find the earth's masses are always divided in just these two classes. And, oddly enough, you will find too, I ween, there's only one lifter to twenty who lean. In which class are you? Are you easing the load of overtaxed lifters who toil down the road? Or are you a leaner who lets others share your portion of labour and worry and care. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Creed to Be by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. Read for LibriVox.org by Kita 2015. Our thoughts are molding unmade spheres, and like a blessing or a curse, they thunder down the formless years and ring throughout the universe. We build our futures by the shape of our desires and not by acts. There is no pathway of escape, no priest made creeds can alter facts. Salvation is not begged or bought. Too long the selfish hope sufficed. Too long men reeked with lawless thought and leaned upon the tortured Christ. Like shriveled leaves, these worn-out creeds are dropping from religion's trees. The world begins to know its needs, and our souls are crying to be free. Free from the load of fear and grief, man fashioned in an ignorant age. Free from the ache of unbelief, he fled into rebellious rage. No church can bind him to the things that fed the first crude souls evolved. For mounting up on daring wings, he questions mysteries all unsolved. Above the chant of priests, above the blatant voice of brain doubt, he hears the still, small voice of love which sends its simple message out. And clearer, sweeter, day by day, its mandate echoes from the skies. Go roll the stone of self away 
and let the Christ within thee rise. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Inspiration by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Rosalind Carlyle Not like a daring, bold, aggressive boy Is inspiration eager to pursue, But rather like a maiden, fond yet coy, Who gives herself to him who best doth woo. Once she may smile, or thrice, thy soul to fire, In passing by, but when she turns her face, Thou must persist and seek her with desire, if thou wouldst win the favour of her grace. And if, like some winged bird, she cleaves the air, and leaves thee spent and stricken on the earth, still must thou strive to follow even there, that she may know thy valour and thy worth. Then shall she come, unveiling all her charms, giving thee joy for pain and smiles for tears. Then shalt thou clasp her with possessing arms, The while she murmurs music in thine ears. But ere her kiss has faded from thy cheek, She shall flee from thee over hill and glade, So must thou seek and ever seek and seek, For each new conquest of this phantom maid. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Wish by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Dom Bombadil Should some great angel say to me tomorrow, Thou must retreat thy pathway from the start, But God will grant in pity for thy sorrow Some one dear wish, the nearest to thy heart. This were my wish, for my life's dim beginning, let be what has been, wisdom plan the whole, my want, my woe, my errors, and my sinning, all, all were needed lessons for my soul. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Three Friends by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org By Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida Three Friends Of all the blessings which my life has known, I value most and most praise God for three, Want, loneliness, and pain, those comrades true, Who masqueraded in the garb of foes, For many a year, and filled my heart with dread, yet fickle joys, like false, pretentious friends, have proved less worthy than this trio. First, want taught me labor, led me up the steep and toilsome paths to hills of pure delight, trod only by the feet that know fatigue, and yet press on until the heights appear. Then loneliness and hunger of the heart sent me up reaching to the realms of space till all the silences grew eloquent and all their loving forces hailed me friend last pain taught prayer placed in my hand the staff of close communion with the over soul that i might lean upon it to the end and find myself made strong for any strife and then these three, who had pursued my steps, Like stern, relentless foes, year after year, Unmasked and turned their faces full on me, And lo, they were divinely beautiful, For through them shone the lustrous eyes of love. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. You Never Can Tell by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Anna Marie Tokus 
You never can tell when you send a word, like an arrow shot from a bow by an archer blind, be it cruel or kind, just where it may chance to go. It may pierce the breast of your dearest friend, tipped with its poison or balm. To a stranger's heart in life's great mart, it may carry its pain or its calm. You never can tell when you do an act just what the result will be. But with every deed you are sowing a seed, though the harvest you may not see. Each kindly act is an acorn dropped in God's productive soil. You may not know, but the tree shall grow with shelter for those who toil. You never can tell what your thoughts will do in bringing you hate or love. For thoughts are things, and their airy wings are swifter than carrier doves. They follow the law of the universe. Each thing must create its kind, and they speed o'er the track to bring you back whatever went out from your mind. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Here and Now by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Christine G. Here in the heart of the world, Here in the noise and the din, Here where our spirits were hurled To battle with sorrow and sin. This is the place and the spot For knowledge and infinite things. This is the kingdom where thought Can conquer the prowess of kings. Wait for no heavenly life, Seek for no temple alone, here in the midst of the strife, know what the sages have known. See what the perfect ones saw, God in the depth of each soul. God as the light and the law, God as beginning and goal. Earth is one chamber of heaven, death is no grander than birth. Joy in the life that was given, strive for perfection on earth. Here in the turmoil and roar, show what it is to be calm. Show how the spirit can soar, and bring hack its healing and balm. Stand not aloof nor apart, plunge in the thick of the fight. There in the street and the mart, that is the place to do right. Not in some cloister or cave, not in some kingdom above. Here on the side of the grave, here should we labour and love. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Unconquered by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. Read for LibriVox.org by Roslyn Carlyle. However skilled and strong art thou, my foe, however fierce is thy relentless hate, though firm thy hand and strong thy aim, and straight thy poisoned arrow leaves the bended bow, to pierce the target of my heart, ah, no! I am the master yet of my own fate. Thou canst not rob me of my best estate. Though fortune, fame, and friends, ye love shall go. Not to the dust shall my true self be hurled, Nor shall I meet thy worst assaults dismayed. When all things in the balance are well weighed, There is but one great danger in the world. Thou canst not force my soul to wish thee ill. That is the only evil that can kill. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. All That Love Asks by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Shakira Searle All that I ask, says love, is just to stand and gaze unchided deep in thy dear eyes, for in their depths lies largest paradise. Yet if, perchance, one pressure of thy hand be granted me, then joy I thought complete were still more sweet. All that I ask, says love, all that I ask is just thy handclasp. Could I brush thy cheek? As zephyrs brush a rose leaf, words are weak 
to tell the bliss in which my soul would bask. There is no language but would desecrate a joy so great. All that I ask is just one tender touch of that soft cheek, thy pulsing palm in mine, thy dark eyes lifted in a trust divine, and those curled lips that tempt me overmuch, turned where I may not seize the supreme bliss of one mad kiss. All that I ask, says love, of life, of death, or of high heaven itself, is just to stand, glance melting into glance, hand twined in hand, the while I drink the nectar of thy breath, in one sweet kiss, but one of all thy store, I ask no more. All that I ask, nay, self-deceiving love, reverse thy phrase, so thus the words may fall. In place of all I ask, say, I ask all. All that pertains to earth, or soars above, all that thou wert, art, will be body soul love asks the whole end of poem this recording is in the public domain does it pay by ella wheeler wilcox read for LibriVox.org by roslyn carlyle if one poor burdened toiler o'er life's road, who meets us by the way, goes on less conscious of his galling load, then life indeed does pay. If we can show one troubled heart the gain that lies always in loss, why then, we too are paid for all the pain of bearing life's hard cross. If some despondent soul to hope is stirred, some sad lip made to smile, by any act of ours or any word, then life has been worthwhile. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sestina by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. Read for LibriVox.org by Christine G. I wandered over the vast green plains of youth, and searched for pleasure on a distant height. Fame's silhouette stood sharp against the skies, beyond vast crowds that thronged a broad highway. I caught the glimmer of a golden goal, while from a blooming bower smiled siren love. Straight gazing in her eyes, I laughed at love, with all the haughty insolence of youth. As past her bower I strode to seek my goal. Now will I climb to glory's dizzy height, I said, for there above the common way, doth pleasure dwell companioned by the skies. But when I reached that summit near the skies, so far from man I seemed, so far from love. Not here, I cried, doth pleasure find her way. Seen from the distant borderland of youth, fame smiles upon us from her sun-kissed height, but frowns in shadows when we reach the goal. Then were mine eyes fixed on that glittering goal, dear to all sense, sunk souls beneath the skies, Gold tempts the artist from the lofty height, Gold lures the maiden from the arms of love, Gold buys the fresh, ingenuous heart of youth, And gold, I said, will show me pleasure's way. But, ah, the soil and discord of that way, Where savage hoarders rushed headlong to the goal, Dead to the best impulses of their youth, Blind to the azure beauty of the skies, Dull to the voice of conscience and of love, they wandered far from truth's eternal height. Then truth spoke to me from that noble height, saying, Thou didst pass pleasure on the way, she with the yearning eyes so full of love, whom thou disdained to seek for glory's goal. Two blending paths beneath God's arching skies lead straight to pleasure, ah, blind heart of youth! Not up fame's height, not toward the base God's goal, doth pleasure make her way, but neath calm skies where duty walks with love in endless youth. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
THE OPTIMIST by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida THE OPTIMIST The fields were bleak and sodden, not a wing, or note enlivened the depressing wood. A soiled and sullen, stubborn snowdrift stood beside the roadway, Winds came muttering of storms to be, and brought the chilly sting of icebergs in their breath. Stalled cattle mood forth plaintive pleadings for the earth's green food. No gleam, no hint of hope in anything. The sky was blank and ashen, like the face of some poor wretch who drains life's cup too fast. Yet swaying to and fro as if to fling about chilled nature its lithe arms of grace smiling with promise in the wintry blast the optimistic willow spoke of spring end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Pessimist by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida The Pessimist The pessimistic locust, last to leaf, Though all the world is glad, still talks of grief. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. An Inspiration by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida An Inspiration However the battle is ended, Though proudly the victor comes, with fluttering flags and prancing nags and echoing roll of drums still truth proclaims this motto in letters of living light no question is ever settled until it is settled right though the heel of the strong oppressor may grind the weak in the dust and the voices of fame with one acclaim may call him great and just let those who applaud take warning, and keep this motto in sight. No question is ever settled, until it is settled right. Let those who have failed take courage, though the enemy seems to have won. Though his ranks are strong, if he be in the wrong, the battle is not yet done. For, sure as the morning follows, the darkest hour of the night. No question is ever settled until it is settled right. O oh, man bowed down with labor, O oh, woman young yet old, O oh, heart oppressed in the toiler's breast and crushed by the power of gold. Keep on with your weary battle against triumphant might. No question is ever settled until it is settled right. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Life's Harmonies by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King. Let no man pray. That he know not sorrow. Let no soul ask to be free from pain. For the gall of today is the sweet of tomorrow, and the moment's loss is the lifetime's gain. Through want of a thing did its worth redouble, through hunger's pangs does the feast content, and only the heart that has harboured trouble can fully rejoice when joy is sent. Let no man shrink from the bitter tonics of grief and yearning and a need 
and strife for the rarest chords in the soul's harmonics are found in the minor strains of life. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Preparation by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org By Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida We must not force events, but rather make The heart soil ready for their coming as The earth spreads carpets for the feet of spring Or, with the strengthening tonic of the frost, Prepares for winter should a july noon burst suddenly upon a frozen world small joy would follow even though that world were longing for the summer should the sting of sharp december pierce the heart of june what death and devastation would ensue all things are planned the most majestic sphere that whirls through space is governed and controlled by supreme law as is the blade of grass which through the bursting bosom of the earth creeps up to kiss the light poor puny man alone doth strive and battle with the force which rules all lives and worlds and he alone demands effect before producing cause how vain the hope we cannot harvest joy until we sow the seed and god alone knows when that seed has ripened oft we stand and watch the ground with anxious brooding eyes complaining of the slow unfruitful yield not knowing that the shadow of ourselves keeps off the sunlight and delays result sometimes our fierce impatience of desire doth like a sultry may force tender shoots of half-formed pleasures and unshaped events to ripen prematurely and we reap but disappointment or we rot the germs with briny tears ere they have time to grow while stars are born and mighty planets die and hissing comets scorch the brow of space the universe keeps its eternal calm through patient preparation year on year the earth endures the travail of the spring and winter's desolation so our souls in grand submission to a higher law should move serene through all the ills of life believing them mask joys end of poem this recording is in the public domain gethsemane by ella wheeler wilcox read for LibriVox.org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida Gethsemane In golden youth, when seems the earth A summer land of singing mirth, When souls are glad and hearts are light, And not a shadow lurks in sight, We do not know it, but there low, Somewhere veiled under evening skies, A garden which we all must see, The garden of Gethsemane with joyous steps we go our ways love lends a halo to our days light sorrows sail like clouds afar we laugh and say how strong we are we hurry on and hurrying go close to the borderland of woe that waits for you and waits for me forever waits gethsemane down shadowy lanes, across strange streams, Bridged over by our broken dreams, Behind the misty caps of years, 
behind the great salt fount of tears the garden lies strive as you may you cannot miss it in your way all paths that have been or shall be pass somewhere through gethsemane all those who journey soon or late must pass within the garden's gate must kneel alone in darkness there and battle with some fierce despair god pity those who cannot say not mine but thine who only pray let this cup pass and cannot see the purpose in gethsemane end of poem this recording is in the public domain god's measure by ella wheeler wilcox read for LibriVox.org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida god's measure god measures souls by their capacity for entertaining his best angel love who loveth most is nearest kin to god who is all love or nothing he who sits and looks out on the palpitating world and feels his heart swell in him large enough to hold all men within it he is near his great creator's standard though he dwells outside the pale of churches and knows not a feast day from a fast day or a line of scripture even what god wants of us is that outreaching bigness that ignores all littleness of aims or loves or creeds and clasps all earth and heaven in its embrace end of poem this recording is in the public domain noblesse oblige by ella wheeler wilcox read for LibriVox.org by ronnie k i hold it the duty of one who is gifted and specially dowered in all men's sight to know no rest till his life is lifted fully up to his great gift's height he must mould the man into rare completeness for gems are set only in gold refined he must fashion his thoughts into perfect sweetness and cast out folly and pride from his mind for he who drinks from a god's gold fountain of art or music or rhythmic song must sift from his soul the chaff of malice and weed from his heart the roots of wrong great gifts should be worn like a crown befitting and not like gems in a beggar's hands and the toil must be constant and unremitting which lifts up the king to the crown's demands end of poem this recording is in the public domain Through Tears by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Christine G An artist toiled over his pictures. He laboured by night and by day. He struggled for glory and honour, but the world it had nothing to say. His walls were ablaze with the splendours we see in the beautiful skies, but the world beheld only the colours that were made out of chemical dyes. Time sped, and he lived, loved, and suffered. He passed through the valley of grief, Again he toiled over his canvas, since in labour alone was relief. It showed not the splendour of colours, of those of his earlier years. But the world, the world bowed down before it, because it was painted with tears. A poet was gifted with genius, and he sang, and he sang all the days. He wrote for the praise of the people, but the people accorded no praise. Oh, his songs were as blithe as the morning, as sweet as the music of birds, but the world had no homage to offer because they were nothing but words. Time sped, and the poet, through sorrow, became like his suffering kind. Again he toiled over his poems, to lighten the grief of his mind. They were not so flowing and rhythmic as those of his earlier years, but the world low it offered its homage, because they were written in tears. So ever the price must be given, by those seeking glory in art, so ever the world is repaying, 
the grief-stricken suffering heart. The happy must ever be humble, ambition must wait for the years, ere hoping to win the approval of a world that looks on through its tears. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. What We Need by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Christine G. What does our country need? No army standing, with sabres gleaming ready for the fight, no increased navies skilful and commanding, to bound the waters with an iron might, not haughty men with glutted purses trying to purchase souls and keep the power of place, not jewelled dolls with one another vying for palms of beauty, elegance, and grace. But we want woman strong of soul yet lowly, with that rare meekness born of gentleness, woman whose lives are pure and clean and holy, the woman whom all little children bless. Brave earnest woman, helpful to each other, with finest scorn for all things low and mean, woman who hold the names of a wife and mother, far nobler than the title of a queen. Oh, these are they whom all the men of story, those mothers oft times shorn of grace and youth, who, worn and weary, ask no greater glory than making some young soul the home of truth, who sow in hearts all fallow for the sowing, the seeds of virtue and of scorn for sin, and patient watch the beauteous harvest growing, and weed out tears which crafty hands cast in. Women who do not hold the gift of beauty as some rare treasure to be bought and sold, but guard it as a precious aid to duty, the outer framing of the inner gold. Women who love above their cradles bending, let flattery's voice go by and give no heed, while their pure prayers like incense are ascending. These are our country's pride, our country's need. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Plea to Science by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida O oh, science, reaching backward through the distance, most earnest child of God, exposing all the secrets of existence with thy divining rod, I bid thee speed up to the heights supernal, clear thinker ne'er sufficed, go seek and bind the laws and truths eternal, but leave me Christ. Upon the vanity of pious sages, let in the light of day, break down the superstitions of all ages, thrust bigotry away. Stride on and bid all stubborn foes defiance, let truth and reason reign. But I beseech thee, O immortal science, let Christ remain. What canst thou give to help me bear my crosses, in place of him, my Lord? And what to recompense for all my losses, and bring me sweet reward? Thou couldst not with thy clear, cold eyes of reason, Thou couldst not comfort me, Like one who passed through that tear-blotted season In sad Gethsemane. Through all the weary, wearing hour of sorrow, What word that thou hast said Would make me strong to wait for some to-morrow When I should find my dead. When I am weak and desolate and lonely, and prone to follow wrong. Not thou, O science, Christ, my Saviour only, can make me strong. Thou art so cold, so lofty, and so distant, though great my need might be. No prayer, however constant and persistent, could bring thee down to me. Christ stands so near, to help me through each hour, To guide me day by day. O oh, science, sweeping all before thy power, Leave Christ, I pray.
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Respite by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. Read for LibriVox.org by Ken Masters. The mighty conflict which we call existence doth wear upon the body and the soul. Our vital forces wasted in resistance, so much there is to conquer and control. The rock which meets the billows with defiance, undaunted and unshaken day by day, in spite of its unyielding self-reliance, is by the warfare surely worn away. And there are depths and heights of strong emotions that surge at times within the human breast, more fierce than all the tides of all the oceans which sweep on ever in divine unrest. I sometimes think the rock worn with adventures and sad with thoughts of conflicts yet to be, must envy the frail reed which no one censures, when overcome, tis swallowed by the sea. This life is all resistance and repression. Dear God, if in that other world unseen, not rest we find, but new life and progression, Grant us a respite in the grave between. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Song by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. Read for LibriVox.org by Ken Masters. O oh, praise me not with your lips, dear one though your tender words I prize. But dearer by far is the soulful gaze of your eyes, your beautiful eyes, your tender, loving eyes. O oh, chide me not with your lips, dear one, though I cause your bosom sighs. You can make repentance deeper far by your sad reproving eyes, your sorrowful troubled eyes. Words at the best are but hollow sounds. Above in the beaming skies the constant stars say never a word, but only smile with their eyes. Smile on with their lustrous eyes. Then breathe no vow with your lips, dear one. On the winged wind speech flies. But I read the truth of your noble heart in your soulful speaking eyes, in your deep and beautiful eyes. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Ships by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. Read for LibriVox.org by Ken Masters. If all the ships I have at sea should come a sailing home to me, ah, well. The harbour could not hold so many sails as there would be if all my ships came in from sea. If half my ships came home from sea and brought their precious freight to me, ah well, I should have wealth as great as any king who sits in state, so rich the treasures that would be in half my ships now out at sea. If just one ship I have at sea should come a-sailing home to me, ah well, the storm-clouds then might frown, for if the others all went down, still rich and proud and glad I'd be if that one ship came back to me. 
If that one ship went down at sea And all the others came to me, Weighed down with gems and wealth untold, With glory, honours, riches, gold, The poorest soul on earth I'd be If that one ship came not to me. O skies, be calm! O winds, blow free! Blow all my ships safe home to me. But if thou sendest some a rack To never more come sailing back, Send any, all that skim the sea, But bring my love ship home to me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Her Love by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Ken Masters The sands upon the ocean side That change about with every tide And never true to one abide A woman's love I liken to. The summer zephyrs, light and vain, That sing the same alluring strain To every grass blade on the plain, A woman's love is nothing more. The sunshine of an April day That comes to warm you with its ray, But while you smile has flown away, A woman's love is like to this. God made poor woman with no heart, but gave her skill and tact and art, and so she lives and plays her part. We must not blame, but pity her. She leans to man, but just to hear the praise he whispers in her ear, herself, not him, she holdeth dear. O oh, fool, to be deceived by her! To sate her selfish thirst she quaffs The love of strong hearts in sweet draughts, Then throws them lightly by and laughs, Too weak to understand their pain. As changeful as the winds that blow From every region to and fro, Devoid of heart, She cannot know the suffering of a human heart. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love's Burial by Ella Wheeler Wilcox, read for LibriVox.org, by Ken Masters. Let us clear a little space, and make love a burial place. He is dead, dear, as you see, and he wearies you and me. Growing heavier day by day, let us bury him, I say. Wings of dead white butterflies, these shall shroud him as he lies, In his casket rich and rare, made of finest maiden hair. With the pollen of the rose, let us his white eyelids close. Put the rose thorn in his hand, shorn of leaves, you understand. Let some holy water fall on his dead face, tears of gall. As we kneel to him and say, dreams to dreams, and turn away. Those grave diggers doubt distrust, they will lower him to the dust. Let us part here with a kiss, you go that way, I go this. Since we buried love today, we will walk a separate way. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
If by Ella Wheeler Wilcox, read for LibriVox.org, by Ian King. Dear love, if you and I could sail away, with snowy pennons to the winds unfurled, across the waters of some unknown bay, and find some island far from all the world, if we could dwell there evermore alone, while unrecorded years slip by apace, Forgetting and forgotten and unknown By aught save native songbirds of the place. If winter never visited that land And summer's lap spilled o'er with fruits and flowers And tropic trees cast shade on every hand And twined boughs formed sleep-inviting bowers. If from the fashions of the world set free and hid away from all its jealous strife. I lived alone for you, and you for me. Ah, then, dear love, how sweet were wedded life. But since we dwell here in the crowded way, where hurrying throngs rush by to seek for gold, and all is commonplace and workaday as soon as love's young honeymoon grows old, since fashion rules, and nature yields to art, and life is hurt by daily jar and fret. Tis best to shut such dreams down in the heart, and go our ways alone, love, and forget. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love is Enough by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org By Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida Love is enough, let us not ask for gold. Wealth breeds false aims, and pride, and selfishness. In those serene, Arcadian days of old, Men gave no thought to princely homes and dress. The gods who dwelt on fair Olympia's height Lived only for dear love and love's delight. Love is enough. Love is enough. Why should we care for fame? Ambition is a most unpleasant guest. It lures us with the glory of a name. Far from the happy haunts of peace and rest. Let us stay here, in this secluded place, Made beautiful by love's endearing grace. Love is enough. Love is enough. Why should we strive for power? It brings men only envy and distrust. The poor world's homage pleases but an hour and earthly honors vanish in the dust. The grandest lives are oft times desolate. Let me be loved, and let who will be great. Love is enough. Love is enough. Why should we ask for more? What greater gift have God's vouchsafed to men? What better boon of all their precious store than our fond hearts that love and love again old love may die new love is just as sweet and life is fair and all the world complete love is enough end of poem this recording is in the public domain Life is a Privilege by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida Life is a privilege, its youthful days Shine with the radiance of continuous maze To live, to breathe, 
to wonder and desire, to feed with dreams the heart's perpetual fire, to thrill with virtuous passions, and to glow with great ambitions in one hour to know the depths and heights of feeling. God, in truth, how beautiful, how beautiful is youth. Life is a privilege, like some rare rose, the mysteries of the human mind unclose. What marvels lie in earth and air and sea, what stores of knowledge wait our opening key, what sunny roads of happiness lead out beyond the realms of indolence and doubt. And what large pleasures smile upon and bless The busy avenues of usefulness. Life is a privilege, though noontide fades, And shadows fall along the winding glades, Though joy blooms wither in the autumn air, Yet the sweet scent of sympathy is there, Pale sorrow leads us closer to our kind, And in the serious hours of life we find Depths in the souls of men which lend new worth And majesty to this brief span of earth. Life is a privilege if some sad fate Sends us alone to seek the exit gate. If men forsake us, and as shadows fall, Still does the supreme privilege of all Come in that reaching upward of the soul To find the welcoming presence at the goal, And in the knowledge that our feet have trod, Paths that led from and must wind back to God. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Insight by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Freya Hansen. Sirs, when you pity us, I say, you waste your pity. Let it stay, well corked and stored upon your shelves, until you need it for yourselves. We do appreciate God's thought in forming you before he brought us into life. His art was crude, but oh, so virile in its rude, large elemental strength, and then he learned his trade in making men, learned how to mix and mould the clay and fashion it a finer way. How fine that skilful way can be, you need but lift your eyes to see. And we are glad God placed you there To lift your eyes and find us fair. Apprentice labour though you were, He made you great enough to stir The best and deepest depths of us, And we are glad he made you thus. Aye, we are glad of many things, God strung our hearts with such fine strings, The least breath moves them, and we hear Music where silence greets your ear. We suffer so, but women's souls like violet powder dropped on coals give forth their best in anguish, oh, the subtle secrets that we know. Of joy and sorrow, strange delights, of ecstasy and pain-filled nights, and mysteries of gain and loss, known but to Christ upon the cross. Our tears are pitiful to you, Look how the heaven reflecting dew Dissolves its life in tears. The sand, meanwhile, lies hard upon the strand. How could your pity find a place for us, The mothers of the race? Men may be fathers unaware, So poor the title is you wear. But mothers, who that crown adorns, Know all its mingled blooms and thorns. And she, whose feet that pain hath trod, hath walked upon the heights with God. No, offer us not pity's cup, there is no looking down or up. Between us, I look straight in eye, born equals 
so we live and die. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Woman's Answer by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Ronnie K. You call me an angel of love and of light, a being of goodness and heavenly fire, sent out from God's kingdom to guide you aright in paths where your spirit may mount and aspire. You say that I glow like a star on its course, like a ray from the altar, a spark from the source. Now list to my answer, let all the world hear it. I speak unafraid what I know to be true. A pure, faithful love is the creative spirit, which make women angels, I live but in you. We are bound soul to soul by life's holiest laws. If I am an angel, why you are the cause. As my ship skims the sea, I look up from the deck. Fair, firm at the wheel shines love's beautiful form. And shall I curse the bark that last night went to wreck? By the pilot, abandoned to darkness and storm, my craft is no stauncher, she too had been lost, had the wheelman deserted or slept at his post. I laid down the wealth of my soul at your feet. Some woman does this for some man every day. No desperate creature who walks in the street has a wickeder heart than I might have, I say. Had you wantonly misused the treasures you won, as so many men with heart riches have done, this fire from God's altar, this holy love flame, that burns like sweet incense forever for you, might now be a wild conflagration of shame had you tortured my heart, or been base or untrue. For angels and devils are cast in one mold, till love guides them upward or downward, I hold. I tell you, the women who make fervent wives and sweet tender mothers, had fate been less fair, are the women who might have abandoned their lives to the madness that springs from and ends in despair, as the fire on the hearth which sheds brightness around, neglected may level the walls to the ground. The world makes grave errors in judging these things. Great good and great evil are born in one breast. Love horns us and hoofs us or gives us our wings. And the best could be worst as the worst could be best. You must thank your own worth for what I grew to be, for the demon lurked under the angel in me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The World's Need by Ella Wheeler Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by David Lawrence So many gods, so many creeds, So many paths that wind and wind, While just the art of being kind Is all the sad world needs. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Note. The final word in the title of this volume refers to the divine power in every human being, the recognition of which is the secret to all success and happiness. It is this idea which many of the verses endeavor to illustrate. End of Poems of Power by Ella Wheeler Wilcox